everybody. Welcome to the Sick Girls Pod. And this is a show where we like to talk about all things sex in the city. And today we are continuing on with Carrie Diaries. We are almost finished. We only have uh, two recaps left after this, which is crazy. Uh, and uh, today we're talking about season two, episodes six and seven. And uh, I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and Jax is here. And how you doing, Jax? I'm great. I'm excited because obviously you and I will continue our creative partnership and, and recap <laughs> many more things. But Rachel, bummed that we are going to have to say goodbye to these characters soon. They're really growing on me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I really do think this show is is underrated, uh, under appreciated. I mean, I've have I have my issues with the show that you know they all have adult partner, they've all had or have adult partners, which is a little yeah. weird. Uh, you know, some other things, uh, the way they treat Carrie like she is an adult. Like, what's the point in having a teen show if you're not going to treat your character like a teen hardly at all? And to be honest, I think they realized at the end of season one, they're like, we got to get this girl in the city. And we got like, she would have yeah. just been, back if they would have been college age. Then all of this kind of would have made more sense. Mm -hmm. I understand why that we wanted to see Carrie Bradshaw in high school. But yeah, I mean, the life that she's living is not that of a high schooler. Yeah. And we're going to talk about it today. But yeah, to, to make, to kind of wedge in uh, that, to make her be sort of a sex columnist at in high school. I, I don't think that was necessary. All you needed to really show was that she was interested in writing uh, yeah. or uh, that she was, you know, bold as a writer. Uh, you didn't need to have her literally writing about sex. Yeah. Although I did think it was kind of fun to see how she was so, trepidatious about it and how she's like I'll never write it about it again and we know what happens I think mm -hmm. they wanted that payoff oh yeah yeah they used that payoff at the expense of what could have been a more interesting story yeah I mean I just don't think that payoff was like you didn't need to be that on the nose right with it but I mean that's part of the problem this show had is that they're trying to tell a teenage story but uh, it, it's not a like it's a mature sex in the city was a mature show so how do you kind of how do you make those worlds mesh i think yes. it's hard and like what audience are you trying to engage are you trying to engage teenagers or are you trying to engage fans of sex in the city uh i don't think they necessarily nailed it on either one as far as audience and uh, so i think that was part of the problem of why they only got two seasons but i do think it's it's all that said, I still think it's actually a really well done show and I love the cast. And uh, I think that episode for episode, there are some really strong episodes. And because you have 42 minutes, you, they can do stuff that, that Sex and the City just couldn't do. Yeah, I totally agree. And what you said, uh, you know, about the, the, the it's mature content, but in high school, it got me thinking that there were actually a lot of missed opportunities for them to discuss sex lives of high schoolers. Yeah. Much more realistic way. And I think actually for a lot of comedy, like, you know, without revealing too much about my past, there was not a lot of, there was not any sexual activity for me in high school. However, yeah. there was like some kissing and some awkward moments and some, yeah, some that like, I actually think, they jump to sex mm -hmm. quite quickly without even talking about things that you are along the yeah. way. I think could have been funny. Yeah, I agree. They they could have have treated them like teeners. That's why I said the kind of the biggest problem was that that uh, you know they have every single character have an adult relationship, and I just don't think that that's it's certainly not the norm. That's for sure. Yeah, it, it's intriguing that they didn't decide to go the route of really exploring what those relationships could look at like because yeah. honestly there's so much comedic potential in high schoolers trying to figure yeah. out their bodies and each other's bodies mm -hmm. without it having to be just like straight to that yeah because if you think of like Gilmore Girls like Rory all of her she, I mean she did have uh, she did have some older relationships, but for the most part, it was 
just teenagers, you know, and so you got to know her kind of better uh, that way um, through, you know, her dating Dean and, you know, other other people. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so this uh, first episode is called the Safety Dance. And this one, the summary is Carrie is oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Uh, OK, so the summary is when Carrie struggles with writer's block, Weaver tries to help but gets in the way. Maggie and Sebastian grow closer after learning some shocking news. When Bennett moves to a dangerous neighborhood, Walt takes drastic measures to keep himself safe with both hilarious and heartfelt results. And meanwhile, Larissa and Samantha finally find some common ground sex. <laughs> uh, so overall, what do you think of this episode? There was a lot happening. Mm-hmm. I did find this one. Um, I mean, like, I loved Samantha and Larissa, not just the fact that they ended up, you know, getting down to business together, but I love, I think they're two really interesting characters that I'd love to see them bantering back and forth. That was really fun. I think that there are some really serious things going on this episode with Maggie and it really um, made me feel for her. Like this situation is truly dire, not just the fact that she's pregnant, but who the father is, the kind of situation she's in. Like it, it's really heartbreaking. She and she doesn't really have any friends to turn to besides Sebastian. So I <laughs> thought that there were a lot of solid storylines in this episode. Excited to really break down everything with Weaver because that surprised me. What did you think? Yeah, I think it was interesting. I mean, I it's kind of shocking that they would have a scene with a pregnant woman getting sloshed, getting like drinking like that like i would think that would be kind of a taboo uh and uh and yeah overall i i just feel like it, you know it's interesting the idea of carrie being like nervous about sex and obviously that like plays really into to her being a you know sex columnist growing and yeah, when she's uh older and uh, so there was a lot of probably the most tie-ins to the show in this episode than any other episode um but i would think the reason she would be afraid and not want to write this column is because if when her dad reads this he's going to be very upset and how that was never brought up oh well i thought that he was never going to read it because it was a paper it was a paper what do you mean yeah it was for it was a paper for the learning annex i mean not for the learning annex that's where she taught oh right it was oh you're right you're right so I think, I think that it, that's another thing though. Like Weaver was acting like the stakes for this were so sky high and yes, it's important that she does a good job on this paper. Oh yeah. I don't think it was the stakes that he was making her feel like it was and sort of like getting her paralyzed with fear. Yeah. I mean the dad, his, his character just like makes no sense to me because if he's supposed to be kind of overprotective, like why is he letting like his very young daughter and Dorit have this very mature relationship uh, and not being very concerned about that. Uh, And then also letting Carrie, uh, I mean, yes, there's a limit to what you can control in your child, but like very, he's very permissive as far as letting her be in this apartment all summer, like letting her be in the city at all hours. (laughs) You know, it's just kind of like, um, I don't know. I feel like they didn't write that character very consistently or it, it doesn't make sense that he would kind of do what he does. I feel like. Yeah. It's like, they just decided Carrie needed to be in the city and they had to figure out a way to justify it. Yeah. 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 Um, which I don't think it needed to be that literal a translation of sex in the city. He could have just had her being a t- you know, like a normal teenager yeah. and it would have been interesting. But uh, but anyway, yeah, the uh, that's right. It was for a paper. I forgot that. Uh, but um, uh, she's having a hard time uh, figuring out what to write about. And uh, she, uh, she they, someone says, write about what you're afraid of. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? 
If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash homeworkies. And she says, uh, I'm afraid to talk about sex. And, uh, and, you know, obviously this is very ironic for Carrie to be nervous about writing about sex. Cause that's what she did and then goes on to do for her yeah. whole career. So that's Isn't interesting. It, like, what are you afraid of talking about? And what are you just private about? And I mm-hmm. think there's an interesting balance in that mm-hmm. regard. So then we have uh mouse getting concerned about having a safety school uh and she she's nervous which is interesting because she you know tells maggie to uh, like spend 200 and whatever dollars on on applications yeah uh, for different schools <laughs> there's a little bit of like a hypocrisy yeah did you have a safety school like the I have an early decision. So if I wouldn't have gotten in, then I would have just applied somewhere else. Mm. You know, yeah, did, I, wait, did you? I did. Yeah. I, I applied at Southern Utah university, uh, as my backup. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I, I only wanted to go to BYU. That was my yeah. dream. And so I, uh, it's still probably one of the happiest days of my whole life is when I got the acceptance letter from BYU because I my T score was pretty low because I'm not that like, great at math and so that was my biggest concern uh, that I that you know that that would be a problem uh, but uh, yeah I got in and I opened the the letter by myself and my whole family was kind of uh, on the other side of the door like you know waiting to hear oh, and I just started you, like, I wanted to yeah. Surprise. Cause if I didn't get in, cause I was pretty pessimistic, I was like, oh, I probably won't get in. And, uh, then I'll just go to SUU and that will be fine. And I'm sure I would have had a great time at SUU. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I just start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, and it really was the best time of my life or one of the best times of my life was, uh, at BYU. I, uh, I just absolutely loved college. College was so much fun. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, there's all these movies where people go back to high school and not that I like hated high school. I was fine with high school. I liked a lot of the activities, uh, but I hated the lack of freedom in high school. Yes. And, yes. uh, and I, I think I would have been somebody kind of like Carrie that would have been perfectly able to kind of live on my own and make my own choices. And, and I remember in my high school, in order to, uh, they, they were scared in my high school, they were scared that people were going to smoke in the, in the restrooms, uh, which was so stupid because just across the, the street was a park where everyone met and smoked. So nobody, unless I guess it was raining, maybe then they might be tempted to smoke in the restrooms, but, but that was just not, never going to happen. Uh, but they were afraid it would happen. And so they closed all of the restrooms except for the one by the cafeteria, uh, during lunch hours, which, because there were like a couple different sessions of lunch, it was like a lot of the day. Most of the bathrooms were closed and they, they had teachers in front of the one bathroom that you had, that you had to check in with and get like permission and it was just ridiculous. And I, I just couldn't stand stuff like that. Like I, I, I wanted to be free to go to the bathroom when yes. I needed to go to the bathroom. And I remember actually like my first, one of my first classes that I took somebody like 
in college, somebody raised their hand and asked to go to the bathroom. And he's like, the teacher was, the professor was like, this is college. You don't even have to be here if you don't want, like you can go to the bathroom whenever you want. Like, Freedom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would never want to go back to high school. That's for sure. I just having to check in and everybody <laughs> watching what you're doing. I just, I can stand that. Can stand that. Yeah. It's interesting that you're right. It's kind of the high school experience is very glamorized. I think in movies and TV, but like, yeah. I liked high school too, but I liked the freedom of college. I liked that I got to like really study theater and do all the stuff that I was interested in. Yeah. 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 I mean, that first year is kind of rough because you have to do all the general eds, but, uh, <laughs> but once you get through it, I mean, I still, I just had, I had so much fun, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, Weaver tells her writer's block is a good thing. And then they, and they also have fun procrastinating together. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it, it really, he really did feel like burger light in this. 100% episode. Rachel. I yeah. was thinking the same thing. Like he's burger, but burger when burger was on top of the world and you're like mm -hmm. oh I get it we thought burger was a nightmare because he was kind of un less successful at that time in his life and yeah. I remember you and I saying like if he was doing better would it be a better relationship and I think this answered it for us because no burger would have been a nightmare like this <laughs> and like oh I'm I'm awesome and all that stuff I yeah. still find him charming but it's annoying yeah too. yeah <laughs> And it is surprising that it is surprising they would have her uh, lose her virginity to Weaver, you know, when everything had been built up for uh, for Sebastian, obviously. It's kind of an interesting choice. And I don't know if they thought, oh, we're going to have more seasons. So yeah. we'll be able to do more of that. But uh, but yeah, uh, he is very charming and uh, forget the, um, the actor. Oh, Chris Wood is the name of the actor. Yeah, he's he's very charming. So, yeah, yeah you can see why she would fall for him. That's for sure. And Smile. yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So then we get Larissa with uh, with Samantha um, and this guy Harlan, who is friends with the dad, uh, and uh, they're going to have a uh, <laughs> they're going to have a threesome, I guess. <laughs> This is pretty spicy for CW, I would say. Totally. I think it is very spicy, but I think something about the comedy of it made it feel less spicy. Like we don't really actually. Yeah, that's true. And also they're just so funny together. Like I really like the scene in the office where Samantha has her feet up on Larissa's desk and she's like, we need to get you new shoes. You're going to be hanging around mm -hmm. here. Like it's a fun banter. Yeah. 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 They were, they were fun together. I was surprised. Cause like, I thought they hated each other, but then they do kind of address that. Yeah. 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 So then, uh, uh Sebastian, uh, t talks to Maggie says he broke up with the older woman. Um, and that Maggie says that nobody cares if she goes to college and her family. Um, and then Sebastian says she, he's avoiding college that nobody notices him, notices him or cares. So you've got this like contrast, Maggie's family, you know, that uh, no, doesn't care. Whereas like Sebastian's family can help him get into college. And, um, but they, I mean, I guess not as much a contrast, but uh, similarity, neither of their families really cares. Yeah. Which is interesting. Neglectful families. Yeah. Cause then in the next episode, we see that her family is actually quite overprotective. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, it's it's tough they both have tough family environments yeah definitely mm -hmm. and so uh sebastian tells carrie says write about something that makes you smile um, and so he's very encouraging um and then maggie finds out that she's pregnant and she tells simon and simon says you knew what this was Oh, he's um, awful. Yeah, he's awful. He's awful. Despicable. She needs to tell her dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, honestly, she should tell the fiance. 
<laughs> yep. I think she should tell everybody. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I can understand why you would be embarrassed and you wouldn't want, especially if her family's going to like shut her off because of it. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's a tough situation. Uh, and, um, when Maggie goes to Sebastian's, do you, is she like, when she goes, I know she changes her mind, but is she trying to like be with Sebastian so that she can say that he I, is the father? Okay. So Rachel, that occurred to me, but then that felt way too manipulative for what I thought she was doing, but it does seem like it, but I don't know that uh, it could just be, she doesn't, she does seek comfort in like sexualizing a situation. And I think that's more what it was, but who knows? What did you think? She definitely at the very least changed her mind midway through. Uh, But I kind of wondered about that. And I mean, it was kind of shocking, like I said, to have a pregnant woman get totally sloshed. Uh, And, uh, and that that's the part of it that seemed a little predatory. The fact that, that she was kind of I don't know that there was the alcohol involved. It kind of was like, is he, she trying to get him to, to be weak. And, uh, but he was great. I mean, he was great in both these he episodes. Was. Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then we also have Walt, uh, is concerned because Bennett is living in this dangerous part of town and, uh, he ends up macing himself. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. <laughs> I've never maced myself, but I'm afraid that I would. Yeah. So I get it. So then Walt tells, uh, tells Bennett that he feels safe at his place. Uh, and, and even if he's scared of the outside and, uh, and he says he feels safe because I love you. And then they says, then Ben says, I love you too. So that was very sweet. Yeah. I thought this was a lovely moment this relationship is developing nicely. Yeah. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. Best-selling author Irene Hannon is back with the latest installment in her Hope Harbor series, Windswept Way. Buying a supposedly haunted house wasn't in Ashley Scott's plans, but when an intriguing opportunity drops into her lap, she's ready to launch a new life. But she can't do it alone, and her reclusive new neighbor, Jonathan Gray, may be just the person to help, if only there were room in his life for romance. Come home to Hope Harbor, where hearts heal and love blooms. Buy Windswept Away today at BakerBookhouse.com and get 30% off and free U.S. shipping. That's BakerBookhouse.com. And Sebastian, uh, and Sebastian tells Maggie, I'll be there for you. And, uh, and so Carrie at the beginning of the episode, she's doing, going through her, uh, closet, getting rid of the, uh, the fall stuff, getting ready for spring. And, uh, and she finds Sebastian's jacket. And so then she goes over, uh, after, uh, this disagreement with, um, Weaver, she goes over to Sebastian's place and she sees Maggie asleep on the couch. And I, I guess I don't really understand why this would necessarily like be so shocking for Carrie because she's on the couch. It's not like right. she's in some kind of sexy, you know, clothing or she saw them together. Like, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, I guess she's a teenager. She can jump to conclusions, but uh, but she just leaves the jacket there and, and then Sebastian finds it and knows that she saw Maggie. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah. I liked how there was this sort of like metaphor going on where like Carrie was uncomfortable in, you know, Weaver's jacket and then she's putting on Sebastian's and like, is this the right fit? And then mm-hmm. at the end she's in her own and like she being comfortable in her own skin. Like I thought that was a nice thing throughout that. I sort of guess, I sort of understand 
why Carrie was upset about Maggie only because there's a part of me that's like, why is she even there? You know, but as she points out to Malice in the next episode, you know, she and Sebastian aren't together. Technically they can do whatever they want. Yeah. Well, and then we also have the, her dad telling her like, don't throw everything away. Like don't that, that, that her mom would sometimes go and buy back what she donated. <laughs> yes. Which I actually thought was really yeah kind of- yeah and <laughs> i guess that's when they don't want to have like the marie condo of it all <laughs> of, like, yeah yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh-huh. and uh so yeah the idea of kind of like do you throw everything out in a relationship when it doesn't work or do you take kind of the good from it yeah and yeah, uh, yeah. so that was good um also f- kind of a funny scene when they give the Walt and Bennett give the bagel to the homeless man. <laughs> I've had funny. variations of things like that happen. So I get it. <laughs> um, then at the end, she Carrie throws away the the birth control pills and gets a B plus on the essay. And I guess I didn't really understand that. Like, I guess is she not planning on being sexually active anymore? That's why she threw away the pills. That's- understanding i guess she's like oh she broke up with weaver and she doesn't expect that she's going to be with anyone else right now yeah probably not a good choice <laughs> but uh but uh, and i don't thing. yeah and i i don't think you have to take them at the same time every day but i it's probably just good to just to make sure that you did take it and you don't forget yeah so it's a good reminder yeah yeah so what would you give this episode one to ten I would give this one an eight. I thought it was really solid. Um, there was a lot of fun in it, but also like a lot of weightier stuff. So I'd give it a solid eight. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. There was some funny parts. There was some, I mean, they, I think they might've leaned a little bit too much into the uh, the Sex and the City um, homages, but oh, uh, yeah. but it was still a, a, a pretty good pretty good episode. All right. So then we have episode seven, I Heard a Rumor. And this episode, uh, the summary is Carrie is shocked when she reads a nasty rumor about her in New York City gossip rag, but Samantha has a plan to set the record straight. Walt steps in when Bennett feels taken advantage of an interview. Mouse worried that she and boyfriend West are stuck in a rut, does something very risque. Meanwhile, when Maggie experiences a medical emergency, Spashin is forced to reach out to the one person who can help. Plus, Samantha and Carrie attend the exclusive Paris party. So overall, what did you think about this episode? Um, Mouse is hilarious in this. <laughs> I loved getting to see her shine. I just thought she was adorable and funny. And so I, I thought this was a great episode for her. Um, and really quite a fun episode in general that was again balanced by this very situation very difficult situation with Maggie so I thought that this was a really solid one with a lot happening but I feel like they actually balanced each storyline pretty well what did you think yeah I thought it was a pretty good episode I mean and it almost felt like a like a um season finale almost the way it was kind of structured yeah and uh, so Larissa gives them all pagers so that they can be at her beck and call 24 <laughs> seven. I love that Carrie's excited about it until she's not. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm just thinking this show, and especially Larissa, like have no concept of child labor. <laughs> no, <laughs> Definitely but- work teenagers. Hey, Carrie. 24 when- seven. It's like when she's like, I'm not even making any money. I'm just making cappuccinos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they, and and like we said, I just think it would be more interesting if the show really treated these characters like teenagers. I mean, they have their moments where they treat them like teenagers, but for the most part, they treat them like young adults. I do feel like the storyline with Mouse and the basketball team felt very high school in, in a way that I thought was, um, really charming well yeah and i mean now of course that would all be online and it would all be 
like so different than it would have been in 1984 or 85. Uh, So it, it, it could be just sort of a silly, it's not as traumatizing as it would be now. Totally. And I think that like, it's also something that, I mean, it's just so unfortunate now, even if something is on Snapchat or a story on Instagram, like people can screenshot it and it's around forever. This Polaroid of mouse, there's (laughs) one copy of it. No one takes a picture of it. Yeah. Yeah. And Wes is like, Ooh, (laughs) that's my girl. It was cute. It was fun. Uh, Cause she takes a racy photo and and then it falls out of his binder and the whole basketball team sees it. And uh, so it was a funny, funny plot. So smart not to have her face in it. And the thing is, like, I could see how some people might be like, oh, this is boys, teenage boys being gross. But there was something that was so juvenile about it. Yeah. Like the one that's who found- what I'm, ah. That's what I'm saying. It could just be fun. Whereas now it would be this traumatic yes. experience. And even like- he sees the photo and he's like, boobs. And he's just so excited about it. And, you know, it just, it's, it's a yeah. very funny thing that you, as you said, you can tell she's not traumatized by this. Well, I yeah. mean, she wants, she's upset that they don't think that they're, that they could be hers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they start out eating, like eating a uh, hot food, spicy food. And uh, they're trying to get out of their rut. And she says, anticipation is an aphrodisiac, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, we find out, so uh, Maggie's struggling with whether she should keep the baby. And I mean, in 1984, I, I think that it would still be hard. I mean, we had, they had Roe v. Wade, but. I feel like in 1984, she would still need uh, per, like a parental p- yeah. permission and things like that. I don't know. I don't know the rules, the laws yeah. then, but, but, but Sebastian goes with her. She's considering an abortion and, uh, but she's struggling because she always wanted to be a mom. And we hadn't really seen that side of Maggie up until now, that like maternal that with something we I don't think we really knew about her no I thought the way Sebastian handled this was just beautiful mm-hmm. you know he's like yeah I know you have to make decision soon but you don't have to make it today like don't make a decision that you're going to regret right now because right now you seem conflicted and I think he just offers a real safe space yeah. for her. yeah yeah and uh, and then uh Samantha is able to get them into this this party there's this Paris party where the they they have like a raffle and the winner gets to go to Paris and immediately uh, apparently yeah and the bus boy uh is evidently like at all buses all of the big parties yes and so so Samantha basically tells Carrie like don't dismiss anybody that they can all be uh, important tools for you in your career. Yeah. Yeah. Samantha knows how to get around. Yeah. And there's this guy, Tristan. Yes. And uh, he is, what was his, he's a, he's like a he's gossip like, columnist for, I think for page six. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. And, uh, and so then she's trying to kind of impress him. And, uh, and she's mad at Weaver for starting these rumors. Uh, and then his next play is about his ex and all of this stuff. And uh, which is, you know, I, I don't know how people like write memoirs and write about their lives. It's gotta be tough, man, to you know, like share, like in this case, it seems kind of, uh, He's angry because Carrie's yeah. still attached to Sebastian. So it's like it's it's but even if it's not done in a kind of hurtful way, it's just if it's just sharing your story, yeah. I still think it would be really hard. Yeah, and the thing with Carrie, it's like he maliciously 
put that stuff out there in page six. He mm-hmm. basically was like, I got to get ahead of it. And I'm like, oh, this is the thought. Like, I thought she moved on from Weaver maybe a little too quickly because I was like, wow, this is like the first problem you've had. But then mm-hmm. I realized that like, he's got some serious character yeah. flaws. Well, and I my I had to think about this because my sister is a published author and I was, you know, thinking about like, what if she did a memoir? What if she wrote, like, how would I feel? And I told her, I said, I not that she's going to do one or is ever thought about, but I just said, I told her, I said, you can write about me if you want. I, oh, you I like, yeah, I'm like, I have thought about it and dealt with it. And I've decided I give you, I think she, I, again, she has no plans as far as I know, but I don't know. I just, I kind of that's thought about that. Yeah. That. I'm okay with it. If that's what she needs to do, she can write about me. (laughs) That's really generous because you're letting her tell her story better. If that's what she feels like she wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, but it's, it's gotta be tough to, to, you you read these memoirs and you think, Oh, they must've had a a family meeting. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They didn't. And then they're going to have to have one now. Yeah. Yeah. So then Maggie collapses and, uh, and then, uh, then Walt and Bennett, uh, say they love you. They say, I love you, uh, because Bennett's being kind of taken advantage of by by Larissa and the people at interview. They don't really care about him. And Walt, uh, realizes that, realizes that. But by the end, Ben ends up getting the promotion. So it all works out. It all works out. Yeah. Yeah. They played that game really well by making it seem like other people wanted to hire Bennett. I thought that was fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so then Maggie's parents are really upset and they're angry at Sebastian. They're blaming him and he doesn't tell them about Simon. He says that that's, that's Maggie's, uh, Maggie's role or job and he's not going to do that and it turns out she has an ectopic pregnancy uh which are you can die they're they're very serious very scary i really respect that sebastian said you know that's her story to tell who the dad is it doesn't make sense to me that he let them think it was him he can say oh no i'm just like it can be very like oh no i'm just her friend Mm -hmm. by him not saying that it's not him you're basically saying it's you and I definitely don't think it's his place to say who it was but I think he could have said oh no I'm just her friend yeah I agree I agree like, I mean, I'm dating I... Carrie or I used to date Carrie like like I understand yeah. why Carrie's a little bit upset about this well yeah and and I like the fact that he says that he doesn't care he says rumors are just noise and I don't care what other people think. Uh, and it kind of makes sense for his personality that he would take the the blame. Uh, but but yeah, it's not necessary. He, he could have just said, like, I was just helping her. And, and they even say, the parents say, you saved her life. Uh, but uh, but yeah, they they immediately assume that it's uh, it's he's the father and uh, and he doesn't stop them from believing that. So. I don't know. It kind of fits his personality, I feel like, but also, yeah, it's, it probably isn't necessary. Well, I understand things like there's some things out there that's like, oh, people are going to talk about you and like that's noise and like stuff like that, that especially non-specific things. Like if they were just like, oh, he's, you know, a wild guy, he's always sleeping around. Like that's not very specific. And it's like, so I could see being like, I can't control that. But this is a very specific thing that you can just be like, oh, no, I'm just her friend. And that Mm -hmm. to me sort of was like, okay, Sebastian. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. 
And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, and it says to uh, to carry, uh, you know, why do you care so much what other people think? And, uh, and then she says, I know you're a good person. That's all that matters. Everything else is just noise. So. And I do love that. I love that Carrie is starting to be like, it doesn't matter what other people think. Like she calls in to the mm-hmm. guy for page six and she's like, Katya didn't say that I pretended to be her, you know, here's my name. I'm the ex. Yeah. I, that, I think that stuff is very important. That is noise. The page six stuff, mm-hmm. that is all noise. But I also don't want Carrie to invalidate her own feelings that are very real, that it feels a little uncomfortable that if you're going to start dating Sebastian, that people are going to think that that was his baby. Like, I understand why that might be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can see that. And... Uh, and then, yeah, Carrie changes her story to Tristan uh, and gives herself up. And uh, we also see that Walt's mom sees uh, yes. sees Walt and and Bennett together in the picture in the uh, in the newspaper. And Sorry, so that's kind of no, you're that that so that's kind of a big a big moment. I guess that's. Uh, <laughs> Uh, things are going to hit the fan. <laughs> yep, they <laughs> the are. Next episode, I think. Um, it's interesting to see how she confronts him. Yeah. And so they end up taking out her fallopian tube uh, for Maggie. And so they say, the doctor says that won't, she probably won't be able to have children. That's really uh, upsetting. When the way she sad. finally said, does she know yet? You could tell like he was so worried about her. Mm-hmm. He's a stand-up yeah and then so both uh carrie and sebastian end up visiting uh visiting maggie and uh comforting her and then maggie's dad tells them to leave and uh and basically the only reason he doesn't uh i don't know do more is because uh is because sebastian saved her life by getting her to the hospital Uh, so scary yeah I understand having like wanting like a prof- a protective father figure, but like it, it this is no point now. Mm-hmm. I do not like this energy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so there we go. That is this episode. It definitely left. Uh, We've got a lot to do in the next three episodes. I'm not sure if it's a show where they did, you know, they did wrap everything up uh, or. If it's one where they left it on a cliffhanger and then it didn't get renewed, we'll see. That'll be fun to see because I don't know either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let us know if you're listening, what you think of these two episodes. Uh, We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. And Jax, how can people find you? Jacqueline C. Tweets on Twitter and Jacqueline Collier on Instagram. Great. And you can find me at, oh, I guess, did we give a point for this episode? Oh, I would actually give this one higher. I think I'd give this one 8.5 or a 9. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a good one. Uh, so yeah, let us know what you think of this episode. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section or on Twitter at city girls pod and Jack's where can people find you? Jacqueline C tweets on Twitter and Jacqueline Collier on Instagram. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also make sure that you're following the pod at homework is pod and homework is podcast all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really, really appreciate that. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group and merch store. So take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye.